it's just a huge, huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Caitlin Rastetter, RDH, all the way from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She works for a dentist who's on the cover of Dental Town Magazine this month. It's an honor to have you on the show today. She is the founder of Dental Hygiene Nation. Uh, was founded at West Virginia University in the tiny apartment room at Caitlin Rastetter, a then sophomore dental hygiene student. Caitlin loved the career path she took. She was excited to follow in her sister's footsteps as a dental hygienist, and like the rest of us, was proud of her love of teeth. She started a Twitter handle, at DTHYProblems, so at, DT is for dental, HY Hygiene Problems. I've been following you on Twitter for a long time, by the way. I love your, love your post, and you have a, you're, you're a, you're extremely funny. As a <laughs> prank, and tweeted all of her classmates' complaints and stressors of dental hygiene school. Not only did her class love it, but it grew into a worldwide following. Her professors weren't too happy, but Caitlin took a risk, and boy, was she glad she did. Sorry, Mrs. Funk. From this following, she leveraged her audience to tooth lovers and channeled her inner graphic designer and started a clothing line for all the dental freaks out there. Then it was a fun hobby that fueled her Friday night cocktails. Never did she think her tooth lovers would go crazy for her apparel and make it her full-time job. After being a hygienist for six months, Caitlin turned full-time CEO of Dental Hygiene Nation. There was one thing, however, that still didn't sit right with Caitlin, and that was the dental daily uniform, a traditional scrub. She remembers buying scrubs the first time and was so excited to see her dental journey, but quickly to mistaken for a nurse everywhere she went. Not to mention she never felt confident going to class or work. There's something about putting on a slick business suit, she says. Scrubs don't make you feel that way, and they should. This sparked a fire inside Caitlin that only recently began to cease when she released a comfortable, stylish line of scrubs geared for dental professionals, Scrubs by DHN. Scrubs by DHN were created to conform to the dental athlete in you and have a more fitting appearance. This helps our scrub wearers look and feel more comfortable at work, the scrubs are curved to flatter all female body types, which is much more feminine than the traditional unisex scrub. The top includes a chest pocket, which is decorated with a gold tooth, which will for forego the everyday question of, are you a nurse? The scrub pants are soft and semi-fitted with a yoga band. And again, unlike traditional scrubs, do not include pockets or slits in them. These are also decorated with a gold tooth on the hip. Both the top and bottom are made from 100% polyester, which means absolutely no wrinkling and much more stretch. The scrub material is also water wicking, an imperative detail when it comes to cleaning teeth. They are offered in black, charcoal, and blue. Aside from scrubs by DHN, DHN also offers an assortment of dental-themed accessories from hats, phone cases, drinkware, stickers, and patches. Caitlin is determined to change the look of dentistry and pride herself on creating stylish clothing made for the dental professionals by dental professionals. Be proud of what you do, dental babe. I am. Um, I, I can't. I can't tell you. I'm your hugest fan. I, I follow you on Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook. You uh, you just post, and you you should post all those things on Hygiene Town. Something you should start a thread and yeah. just post all all that stuff on Hygiene Town. But uh, my gosh, um. So your sister's a hygienist. So tell us about that journey. When did you two decide you were going to be hygienists? Uh, well, we had braces growing up. We loved our dentist. He was a dentist and orthodontist all in one. He was great. He actually now teaches at WVU as well, uh, Dr. Hannah. So I think always loving the dentist. We wanted to go in the health field. She's four years older than me. So it was kind of she liked it, enjoyed it, talked highly of it. And I said, you know, why not? So it was a great career path for sure. Um, never did I think I would be here today doing clothing and apparel for dental people, but it was kind of led me to the place where I'm at today. So what's on your hat? What's Flossy AF? Flossy AF? What's AF? It's, it's, <laughs> it's a bad word. I'll let you guess it and form your own thoughts. Oh, Flossy as... Well, you know, it's weird. If you say a word that starts with F and ends with U-C-K and it's fire truck, you're all yeah. good. Yeah. But if you take out the middle part of the, the ladder, Flossy AF, that is hilarious. And that's that's what I like about your tweets, too. You are so funny. <laughs> uh, you and I uh, would have to have a battle of who's more politically incorrect. Oh, uh, yeah. Love it. Love I it. Think, uh, I think, in fact, by the way, if you want to see her um, Twitter, I just retweeted her uh, last tweet, at DTHY problems, at Dental Hygiene Problems. Um, but my God, your tweets are always hilarious. It's either something really cool to wear. And, and I get that because I grew up with five sisters. And then when I, uh, had my family, I had four boys. 
And yep. my, my boys, they, they'd wear the same, you, you know, you bought them a, an NFL jersey shirt, they'd wear it five days in a row, and I mean, they, they never change their clothes. But my sisters, I mean, picking out what they were going to wear in the morning was a production. In fact, I got to tell you, um, what I used to do, I had one sister uh, that I, I rivaled with, and she was a year older than me, could run faster than me, outweighed me, and uh, the only way I could ever get back, because she could beat the crap out of me. She eventually became an Immaculate Heart of Mary nut, and I uh, want to go to her class and tell all these stories, uh, but she won't let me, but... uh. She, um, what I would do is I would get up before her alarm went off and I'd go hide all of her curlers in her blow dryer. Oh. <laughs> and she would literally be on her hands and knees begging, promising, you know, she'd never hit me again. You know, I mean, if I hid her rollers, but man, what they, the, the time and energy they put on their hair and their makeup and their clothes and all that. And hell, I just woke up, put on the same thing I wore the day before and I was ready. I will say in hygiene or in dental world, at least we just have to throw our hair up and a ponytail and go out the door and throw on scrubs, which it's nice that you can have that ease of, you know, just a quick ready in the morning. But you still want to try to look somewhat, you know, personable and have some personality into it. Well, you know, um, if if you put something on and it makes you feel, you know, good, then that then you need that. If you put something on you don't like the way it looks, then you shouldn't wear that. I like that. Um, I forget that that trick. Um, um, where on New Year's Eve, you point all your hangers towards you, and then every time you put away uh, your shirt or hang anything up, you've put away from you. And then at the next New Year's Eve, you go back there and look. Okay, I did not wear this shirt one time in 365 days. I and need to. Sure. And you got all these, uh, you got all these bends. Uh, people want clothing, and you got homeless people and all that stuff. And you're like, why? Yeah. Then you do the same thing with your shoes. You point them all towards you, and you put them away against you. Then, then on New Year's Eve, you're sitting there thinking, I got a lot of crap in my closet that I don't even wear. And the yeah. last time, the last time um, we uh, um, decided we were going to clean out our closet, I mean, it was six garbage bags of shirts oh, and shoes and pants. So, 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 um, how many? types of scrubs do you guys sell now on dental hygiene nation we do we have one type so it's our simplest type um definitely going to come out with some more versions um we went with a classic look uh, plain only one pocket in the upper left chest it comes in black charcoal and seal blue so those were pretty much our staple colors um definitely looking to expand those color options um depending on what schools require what colors now on pinterest uh, she's a uh, dental hygiene nation and you've just got tons of, uh, what, what do you call it? The anti scrub? Oh, that's, that's when you get home or on a Friday night, you're ready to go to happy hour and it's, you're so sick of wearing the same thing every day. People forget that we actually have style. So we call it our, we put that board as the anti scrub, the, the, the casual wear that we wear when we're not cleaning teeth basically now you're in pittsburgh pennsylvania yes in this in the city no we're a little bit we're about 20 minutes out so we're not in out. the hustle and bustle but close enough pittsburgh was my uh my favorite uh football team you, you couldn't grow up without uh being a steelers fan back in the, okay. those days and terry bradshaw i mean come on best quarterback ever and bald you know did you see the correlation there bald yeah terry <laughs> bradshaw and the best you see it in dentistry all the time the best dentists are always bald always um bald. But I, I, I love Pittsburgh. And um, um, so do you make these clothes in Pittsburgh? We do. So we, for the apparel, we screen print all of our shirts in-house. So we have full control over the quality of the print and everything. The scrubs are also manufactured in the USA. We don't manufacture them ourselves. We partnered with a great manufacturer actually out of Philadelphia, PA. So it's still very close to home. Um, so we're very pleased to keep a lot of our work in the U.S. So, so someone in Pennsylvania makes the clothes, and then you put on all the the screen, all the emblems and stuff. The screen printing, we purchase blank apparel, and then we put our. It's the screen printing. Our apparel is more screen printing. The scrubs are designed from top to bottom. Those are made in full design by Dental Hygiene Nation. So, so, and your sister still is a full time hygienist. Yes, correct. So, so she, who's making more money? You doing apparel or her doing hygiene? I don't know. Sometimes I ask her, would she ever come work with me? And she said, well, maybe I might have to, depending on where she is in her life. But Dr. Alex, who she works for, is a great dentist. And honestly, if 
if I wasn't in the clothing business, I'd probably beg for her to hire me because it, she is just an awesome dentist to work for. And she was on the cover of Dental Town Magazine. She's a cool lady. I know, and I I, um, I uh, wanted to podcast her, and she was at, um, uh, we were both at a convention in um, um, Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and so I talked her into uh, skipping an hour of lecture and coming over and talking to my homies, and one of the reasons uh, I did that, um, her name is Dr. Alexandra George, and we put her on the cover, is, um, you know, it, you, you probably don't think about things like this unless you were a publisher uh, owning a magazine, but, you know, it's tough when... For some reason, if 20 people submit an article, they're always a male. Mm -hmm. And then half the graduating class is women. And so women dentists who create content are as rare as unicorns because <laughs> we, our, our number one complaint is, how come every time it's a dentist, it's a man? How come yeah. every time it's a woman, it's a hygienist or a dental consultant? Right. And, and then I sit there and say, Be, because I actually send 20 requests to every woman, to, I, every woman that I went to dental school with, I've requested a podcast, an article from so many times, they probably blocked my number and filed a restraining order. Uh, they, they, they're just hard to get. So I was very, very fortunate. I caught her at a convention. She gave me an hour of her time, then uh, put her on the cover. Because um, it's amazing how... If you're a young woman coming out of dental school and you're 25, you don't want to listen to a bunch of 55 year old fat bald guys. You want to see, uh, yeah. you want to have woman leaders because yeah, and, and there are some cultural issues. I mean, um, women dentists tell me that if you're a woman dentist and you marry a man dentist, you're still expected to take care of the kids and cook dinner and you know all this uh, um, crap. I mean, it's it's sad, sad, but I mean, this dentistry uncensored, it's still. And, you know, it's, it's sad. It, I, I bet it's tough to be a woman. You got to be a superwoman. You got to be, got to have a job. Yeah. And then if you, did you get, did you do the married kid thing too? No, I'm, I'm 25. So that's probably not for another few years, hopefully, but. You should wait about 25 more years. You're just about, yeah. your weight is halfway through because yep. uh, that, that, that's a huge decision. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, tell uh, Alexandra that. Thank you so much. Does she go by Alexandra or Alex? We call her Dr. Alex. So. Dr. I, Alex. That level to call her Dr. Alex. Yeah, and she has a weird, a different, I mean, not weird, but a strange business model. All of her employees are hygienists. Yes, so she has a full rotating system where they work front desk, hygiene, and cyst. So they rotate each week. They're um, doing you'll and hygiene for a week, front desk for a week. So they all know every patient, every insurance claim, um, everything from top to bottom. It's a very, very close knit group of uh, dental team. And I love uh, those types of business models because it challenges all your core beliefs. My other favorite woman dentist that I ever did was Gigi Hahn out in San Francisco. She has no employees. She has this really? one big room with one chair in the middle. All of her patients know her iPhone number. She has no overhead. Wow. And if that woman goes in there and does, you know, $500,000 a year, she takes home 450 of it. She yeah. does nothing but net. She does mostly removable, and she does all of her lab work. Wow. I mean, the woman is the lowest overhead operation I've ever seen in my life, and she's in San Francisco. And then your doctor, uh, Alexand uh, Dr. Alexandra George, um, most people are thinking about, well, we should do hygiene assistance. Hygienists are so expensive. If they're $40 an hour, I right. don't want to have two rooms with two $40 hour hygienists. I'll get a $20 hour assistant, a $40 hygienist, and, they'll, and the assistant will... Um, prepare the room, seat the patient, take the x-rays, the hygienist comes over there, she'll probe, and then you uh, record the numbers, and then and then when it starts off to the scaling, then you, she'll go and she'll break down the next room. And so so you could lower your labor 25% for two rooms for instead of two 40s at 80 bucks an hour, you got a 40 and a 20 at 60 bucks an hour. But your doctor did the opposite and right. has all hygienists. Which, I mean, you think about it, they're getting, you can sell treatment on the phone. I mean, you can get that person to commit to a, an appointment or a treatment plan just from the first conversation where, you know, you might, you already start that sale, you get that foot in the door and they're already thinking about, okay, what's my next step? So I think it's, if you want to look at down to the dollar, is it more expensive? Yes, but you might have more complete treatment planning um, since the hygienists know everything about consulting that patient. So, um, you started, uh, the, the scrubs launched, uh, when, when did you launch the scrubs? 
We launched last month, so May, early May of twenty of this year, twenty seventeen. So it's been a long process, but we and were so so. Let's pretend we're on Shark Tank. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll I can't be Mark Cuban because he's tall, handsome, has hair. Uh, I'm short and bald, so I'll have to be Mr. Wonderful. Do you ever watch the show? Oh yeah, all the time. Okay, so I'll be Mr. Wonderful, the bald guy from Canada. Um, I'll just can can I just start Shark Tanking you? Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. How how um. How are you going to acquire new customers? Let's see. Uh, definitely social media. Uh, we only spend probably about 5% on actual paid advertising. The rest comes from organic advertising through social media, which we do awesome on Instagram. Um, to get into offices where the scrubs, we are actually about to launch a champagne campaign, uh, which <laughs> you will get a fitting session where we bring champagne for you to try on the scrubs and um, make sure they fit to you. So that's kind of our new campaign that's coming out um, to get new customers that aren't on social media. So that would just be for the Pittsburgh area? Unfortunately, yes. So until we get brand ambassadors uh, throughout the U.S., we will start local in Pittsburgh and then work from there. And how many, how many, uh, Mr. Wonderful would ask, what, what's your total population? Well, what's the total number of hygienists? What, what's the total size of this market? I'd say, I think the last time I checked, it was anywhere from 150 to 200,000 registered hygienists in the U.S. Um, it could be, I think that was actually taken a few years ago, so it might be a different number now. Um, but we would like to target schools, um, dental schools, so... Um, depending on how many students there are, I have not looked into that number. D yet. Dental schools or dental hygiene schools? Both. Both. So is it? So is your customer also a dentist and a hygienist? For the scrubs, yes. So apparel is mostly hygiene geared, but we do cater to all dental professionals. So um, our apparel is a lot of it's you know the tooth fairy type of thing. So hygienists seek that, but the uh, the scrubs are a full sweep. Now, right now, we are only women scrubs, so it would have to be a woman dentist at this time. Um, we are looking to launch a male scrub to provide to dental schools, so there's a lot more males um, in dental school compared to hygiene school. So do, what percent of the uh, male dentist and male hygienists do you think are fashion-savvy conscience and would be okay. interested in this these dental hygiene nation scrubs? I wouldn't even say they would have to be fashion savvy. I think it's the outgoing dental proud working dentist or hygienist. It's someone that's loves what they do. Um, they are probably on the sportier side since our scrub fabric is very, um, uh, feels like almost like an under armor type of fabric. So to have fashion, yeah, they're probably fashionable, but fashionable, but I'd say, the confident, outgoing dental professionals who we target the most. I, I, want, I want to pick your brain a little bit because you're a millennial. You're 25. I'm a baby boomer. I'm 54. <laughs> so I'm old enough to be your dad. Um, the first thing you said is market on Instagram, which I just, uh, I'm sure every dentist listening over 50 thought, you know, A, what the hell is Instagram? Yeah. And B, how do you, how do you sell scrubs? So, so tell us why millennials like Instagram and why you're having success selling on Instagram, which by the way, was a red flag for me. I, I like, I like stocks. I like investing. Um, were you, are you too old, um, too young to remember, um, Friendster and MySpace? Uh, no, I was on MySpace. I remember. You're on MySpace. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and, um, you know, and at the time that was the Facebook and then yeah. it, it, uh, it went under and now there's a, uh, was Facebook, but so many of their customers left to Instagram that, you know, Facebook had to get out their check and go give them a billion dollars and buy it. And then so many of those were going to Snapchat that they tried to buy that. Right. Uh, but those guys went public for $27 billion. So why is Instagram the hot thing now for 25-year-old hygienist millennials? I'd say for retail, it's huge because people like to buy things that other people are wearing. It's kind of like the popularity contest. They want to see who's wearing what, where they're wearing it. And if they look cool in that picture, they'll think, hey, I can look cool too. So it's a huge visual market that you, if you make your pictures aesthetic um, and eye-catching, 
it can play a big deal in your sales. Um, now, coming from retail, it's a little bit different um, compared to dentistry. But if you make your office look eye appealing and cool, and people, it, you know, like engaging in your patients and make them feel like they're missing out, I think is the best way to get new patients get them interested in your office. And that's really how we get customers is engaging and making it look really cool to be involved. And we always say f fear of missing out FOMO. So we make people feel like fear of missing out is FOMO. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard that Ryan? We, I have not heard Flossie AF or <laughs> FOMO. I am learning a lot. And by, by the way, um, you have 25,000 followers on, on Instagram. That, that is, you're 25 years old. You, you have a thousand for every year you've been alive. That, that is crazy. Yeah, I like that. And those are actually all organic followers. So we did not pay any advertising to get new followers. That is basic from straight content that we released to get those, those followers. So Which explain is that because um, – Everything you read is the best marketing is not something you buy with money. It is content marketing Correct. and um, and the content could be a great picture. It could be a blog. It could be some, I, but, but I love all, all your stuff. All your stuff in my words would just be a uh, fun attitude. Like, like you yeah. have a deal here. I don't think guys with gingivitis. I mean, that's just hilarious. No, well, I've never seen a shirt with anybody that, saying that. What's that? that? From last. I think but I bet it's not true yeah. though. I bet it's not true. I bet if uh, Brad Pitt, who's single now, uh, hadn't uh, had a cleaning last year and called you up with gingivitis, you'd still go out with him. Uh, I'd probably clean his teeth first. <laughs> clean his teeth first. Okay, so so I'm on that deal. So I don't date guys with gingivitis, but um, how how would I go from so seeing that to buying that? Oh, to buy? Well, let me tell you where it came from. Um, we actually partnered with the one of the Bachelorette contestants, or she was on The Bachelor. She was one of the contestants on The Bachelor. I forget what season she was on, but she's a dentist, and she in her bio, she mentioned how she would not date a guy with gingivitis, so we made um, that tank top to feature her. You can look her bio up on YouTube. It's pretty funny. And she uh, was sent her a bunch of free stuff, and she wore it, took a picture. So it was a what great. Was her, what was her name? Oh, I have to go look. I'd have oh, to look. It's, it. it's okay, but uh, did, did she marry the guy? No, she didn't make it. But she was she was hilarious on the show. She actually put his her head on her lap and started looking at his teeth on the show. <laughs> that is hilarious. So it was a woman, and where was she from? Where did she live? I feel like she was out of Washington, I think. The state um, of Washington? I'm, I'm, I think. I'm not so sure. So she was probably stoned then because they, they were the oh. first to legalize weed. You, <laughs> yeah, uh, she's funny. You, you should you make sure this says that. Uh, um, medical marijuana does not cure gingivitis. There oh, you go. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that would but, be a uh, top seller in California. Okay. So, but um, again, though, how would – I'm trying to uh, – um, how would I go to buying something on Instagram? I'm trying to figure that that deal out. So how do you how do you sell? I remember I'm Mr. Wonderful on Shark Tank now. So I'm seeing your product. You got twenty five thousand followers. It's huge. But how does that turn into money? Remember, Mr. Wonderful says all I want is money. Yeah. If I invested in Dental Hygiene Nation, how would I get my money back? So we basically we post a picture. We do a good mix of product photos and funny posts. So every time we post a product photo, we put the link in our Instagram bio, and it links directly to our website. So from there, they can shop. Oh, that. so it's so it's not in the post. I would if I wanted that, I would have to go up to your uh, bio. So so you can't put an active link in the post. Not on Instagram, not right now. And that is why, I mean, this, this is like, and I also, so I, on that shirt, I don't like, I don't date guys with gingivitis. Mm -hmm. I would want to push down, save that to my iPhone and text it to my uh, four boys or my hygienist, whatever, but Instagram won't let me do that. And then if you put a link in your deal, um, the link's not active. Right. And then they wonder why everyone's running off to Snapchat. I mean, am I am I am I missing something? Or I I, th I think what it is is they don't want you to leave Facebook or Instagram. It, they they own the property, and they right. just want you to stay on that, right? Well, I mean, you come across any a lot of products on Instagram. It's kind of a known 
at least with um, my generation, it's you like a shirt, you immediately click their profile page, and you know that's going to link you to their website. So it's okay. kind of a and I now. did, and now I am on your website. I am on Dental yeah. Hygiene Nation. But Instagram and actually does a cool um, collaboration where you can send it to other followers um, of your friends. So say you saw that shirt, it was funny. But your the people you want to send it to have to also have an Instagram handle. So you can have what's called a direct message with your friends by sending them photos that you also think is funny. And I like the fact that the first thing when I go to your website, you're trying to get my email address. You're, yeah. You're trying to get connected. That's very, very, very smart. And uh, so so now I'm going down your deal, and there's a pineapple sunnies. It's a pineapple where the eyes look like two teeth. Yeah, this is just really – I have that tank top on right now, actually. Do you have it on right now? Yeah. Wow. So you, so are you? Um, do you remember what was that movie? Uh, where the guy says, uh, "Greed is good." What was that movie? Uh, what was that movie? Uh, anyway, the pineapple just reminded me of that story. Uh, when I was your age, uh, Hawaii was big into pineapple, but then really? everybody started realizing. Uh, what was it? <laughs> Yeah, Wall Street. What was the name of the movie? 1987 Wall Street. And who was that actor? Michael Douglas, Oliver Stone, all those guys. They said, um, you know, they would say greed is good. And, and the, the basis of the story was there was a uh, great factory, uh, but the land the factory was sitting on was worth more than the business in the factory. So they bought the business and everybody sold the business at Goodwill. Then the first thing they did is close down the business and leveled, you know, unemployed all those people because land is worth more. So when I was little, Hawaii was a huge pineapple export, but really? that land was so much more valuable for golf courts and resorts that that all moved to uh, other uh, uh, islands in the, the Pacific. But, uh, uh, but I, I love that pineapple shirt. So, so then um, when you say add to cart, now that's add to, uh, to buy that, that's right. add to uh, your cart on Dental Hygiene Nation. Correct. So do you also sell it like on Amazon? We are looking into, um, we have an account with Amazon. It's just a matter of having different inventory for Amazon um, and partnering. So our products are available on Prime. So for that to happen, Amazon has to hold a portion of your inventory in their warehouse. So I think if we were to move on, ins or on Amazon, we would start with our accessories um, and possibly do scrubs, and then later we'd probably add our apparel to Amazon, but not at the moment. And why Why is that? Because uh, you would need a lot of investment capital to create this inventory? Not so much. I think it's just when you – It's our products are so unique that the person going on, Inst or on Amazon, they're looking for a general product. Hey, I need a uh, – let's see what was on Amazon the other day. They're buying – products that have multiple sellers so we're so unique that you know we might get someone that goes on amazon isn't going to type in dental fashion top you know they're going to probably type that into google so as of right now we don't know if we would benefit from amazon so but that's something we looked into at least having accessories we might type in dental water bottle, uh, that something more general. I want everybody listening to me today to go on there, and if you're a dentist, buy your hygienist something fun. Come on, if ever she's 25 years old, she's an entrepreneur, she's she's a hustler. She's got what 6,000? How, how many Twitter followers do you have? Uh, Twitter, I think we're up to eight or nine thousand. I mean, uh, that's, uh, that, that's in the top 1% of everybody in dentistry. I mean, you basically have to own a media company uh, to have numbers that big. I mean, that's just that's just crazy. Oh, my God, you got 8,358 followers on Twitter. You only need 5 million to become the president of the United States. That's, <laughs> the, that's what I learned uh, the, a few months ago. And uh, so you're, you're almost at this age, but before you're uh, Trump's age, you, you'll have the 5 million followers and be the next president. And, uh, but come on guys, if everybody listening, she's just a young kid and you're a dentist, buy your hygienist something fun. So tell them right now, what should they buy their hygienist that would be a fun, you know, and, uh, and girls like, uh, um, things like that, where you just come in, you, you know, thinking of you, the thought that counts. So what do you think they should get them? A, um, uh, a hat and apparel, uh, 
Actually, I, mean, our... I don't think you should go in and, and hand your hygienist a tank top. That might not look good <laughs> uh, to the jury. Uh, our, our tooth fairy juice water bottle, that one's always fun. It's a purple water bottle. It holds uh, water that you can use throughout the day because, you know, we don't get very many breaks throughout the day. So uh, that one's a lot of fun. Our koozies um, are inexpensive and a good so, little... So, so I would go to the search and search water bottle? Yep. Water bottle. And it, and it spell corrected. I typed in Biddle and it corrected it to bottle. That was very good. <laughs> or you can go to shop and it's under goodies. So what's the, oh, the shop's the cart? Or is it the three? The so three? there's. Okay, yeah. I see the shop. And then you click to goodies. And so, it's you, under so under shop, you have apparel, you have tanks, tees, sweats, kids, all apparel, scrubs, tops, pants, all scrubs, YR scrubs. Collections, America, congrats, grad, get fit, mommy and me, for the dudes. Then you have accessories, sticker patches, socks, drinkware, phone cases, all goodies. So drinkware. See, if I bought my hygienist something to drink out of, a, I know it would be half vodka. Yeah. Do you have any? Uh, there might be wine in there. It's okay. <laughs> there might be wine in there? Yeah, but I, I love your stuff. I love the, uh, so are you bullish that this is good? There it is, Tooth Fairy Juice. Love yeah. it. Right there. Yep, there it is. Purple. See, I think you should go start a thread on Hygiene Town. Say that, and, and Ryan, uh, and if she starts on Hygiene Town, that's where we can post the podcast on Hygiene Town. And, or, or on uh, Dental Town. Uh, what do you think buy, who'd buy more? Hygienists buying it for themselves or dentists on Dental Town buying it for their hygienists? Um, I think right now it's a good mix. Um, I can tell when it's in office because usually they buy in bulk, which we do um, office discounts if you're buying in bulk. But we get a ton of individuals buying for themselves. We get a lot of boyfriends buying for girlfriends and dentists buying for their whole team. So I'd say it's a pretty even race between those three. My, my girlfriend is a cat, and I, I don't think uh, Tigger could get that lid off. But uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I found cats to be much more affordable. Uh, yeah, yeah. When Actually, you start when you start dating sapiens, they're extremely, extremely expensive. But yeah, I think um, I think you should do both. And and everybody will say it's spamming and you can't do that and it breaks all the terms and conditions and all stuff. But if you sit there and said that Howard's told me to do it because I'm 25, I just started my business 30 days ago, and <laughs> uh, and he just Shark Tanked me on a podcast. And marketing is everything. Ask Fred Joyle that you know marketing is everything. So you got the uh, you know, if you're hungry and hustle and you're humble, so you listen to your customers, your vendors, and 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 um, and nine to five means 95 hours a week. Not, I'm going to work Monday through Thursday, nine to five and take a three-day vacation. If you do your 95 hours a week and you hustle and you're hungry and you and, and I love your creative marketing, you're, you're going to crush it, but you should. You should start a post on Dental Town and say, um, Howard told me you should buy a gift for your hygienist and then post all those JPEGs of all those pictures. Yeah. yeah and then definitely. you can go to hygiene town, but, but in, in, in anything. And I think you're allowed anyway on dental town. Like say you're a dental speaker. You can right. have one post that you're always updating. I'm speaking here, there, everywhere, whatever. So everybody's allowed one post for our, for all their, uh, spam infomercial stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I think you got spunk, uh, Sip all day, get decay, flossy AF, um, tooth fairy juice, water bottles. I love teeth, coffee mugs, and purple. Uh, I love that color. Um, sorry, teeth. I need coffee. Dental hygiene nation. So where do you come up with the name? And, and you you always say dental babes a lot. Dental babes. Yeah. Do it better. <laughs> um, where did dental babes come from? Um, I I guess I just started calling our group of dentalicious followers the dental babes because like i said before our our audience is you know that fun attitude like you said they're you know they're fashionable but they're confident and they're proud of what they do and dental babe kind of works for males and females and they're just a really cool dental good looking person which we get all the time that hygienists are mostly good looking people um and so that might be a little bit of where that came from as well but it's definitely a trending saying that we have, if you follow us, you're in the dental babe club. 
You know, I want to go back to Catholic school because in Catholic school, you had to wear uniforms. You had to wear navy blue pants and pastel color for boys and mm-hmm. pastel color shirts. And my mom um, uh, made all my pants. And so every, every year I got like three or four pairs of pants and three or four. I think she made me five shirts and five pants for the week. And um, I thought it was great because you wake up, there's your uniform, no thinking about it, you know what I mean? But my God, did the girls hate it. Oh my God, did they hate it. And I think a lot of uh, male dentists might not realize that um, some people, um, if they don't like how they look and they don't like what they're wearing and they, you know, they, uh, it, 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 it takes a smile off their face. So do you think, by, you think going into work feeling like a dental babe, feeling like you're rocking hot. Do you think that lifts their attitude and motivates them? Yeah, I think it's mostly feeling comfortable. Um, I, I'm i pretty tall. I'm 5'7". Uh, my sister's 5'10". We've always had the problem of buying scrub pants because they never hit the floor. And it's feeling that breeze on your ankles. You, you feel like they don't fit right. The top's too boxy. And it's not so much, you know, looking quote unquote hot, but it's feeling comfortable. I feel comfortable going to yoga in my yoga pants and my, you know, workout tee. I want to feel that comfortable when I go to work and I want to feel good and feel proud of what I'm wearing. So I think that's really what it comes down to is comfort. And, and talk, talk about that, how um, your fabric is different, the fit is different, the yoga band. So talk, yeah. talk about all that again. Yeah. So I researched a lot on the fabric because I'm the type of person that leaves my scrubs in the dryer a little too long and I don't get them out to the morning of and they were always wrinkled. And I hate ironing. It's a waste of time. So I went with a fabric that was going to bounce right back. It doesn't wrinkle. It's 100% polyester. It's very lightweight, so it's um, very breathable throughout the day, whether you're wearing a lab coat or stress from a hard patient. Um, It's also moisture wicking, which is really cool. Um, It uh, absorbs sweat, so you don't smell throughout the day. And it bounces the stain off so anytime you get the the water that hits that tooth just the right way and it goes everywhere um so it it absorb or reflects that moisture right off so and they're super soft i always compare it to an under armor type of dry fit fabric so you have to feel it to believe it it's the online shopping isn't going to show you have to try try them on and i guarantee you'll fall in love with how soft these scrubs feel and they have a little bit of a stretch to it too, so you don't feel constrained all day long. So, what is your your mission? Well, I guess I, there's two parts. The scrub line. My passion was providing a scrub line that's just for dental people because I feel like the big scrub companies constantly market to the hospitals, the nurses, the doctors. And I don't feel special when I buy scrubs. I feel like I'm buying a scrub that's made for a nurse. So we have a different environment in the dental industry. We have different needs. And I wanted to design something that was just for us. And the dental hygiene nation of it, I like to provide a fun place for everyone to collaborate and come together and you know, share the love of teeth. We are a, no one really understands dental talk. Luckily, I have a sister that I can vent to and talk about, you know, problems of cleaning teeth and dental problems, but not very many people have that outlet. So to have something that you can share with somebody else, I think is huge and really fun to be able to collaborate. So do you um, have uh, like a YouTube channel that like models this stuff like a uh, stuff like that? Have you thought about YouTube or is that just giving away my age and? Oh, and no. Was that a stupid question? Well, we are looking to do a YouTube channel, um, but this would go into a different line of product that we're coming out with. Um, we've launched two subscription boxes so far, and we're in the works of reviewing those products on YouTube on a channel, um, basic inside scoop of a dental professional, um, how they review certain products. What is a subscription box? a subscription box we call it our surprise box so we've launched two so far one in val- for valentine's day and one this past summer 
and it's basically like your birch box for the dental professional. We provide uh, a surprise list of products in the box, um, anywhere from our products um, to trending dental products in the um, in the dental world. So anything that's new, that's not your typical um, basic crest Colgate so, type. So you, so how much is a subscription box? This last one ha was twenty dollars. So our first one was twelve, and the second round we the first one was twelve for last year's Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of revamped and put a lot more product into the next this past one in the summer. So it was a lot um, bigger and badder, I'd say. So we were doing a twenty dollar box. The next one is set to release this fall. This is a great fun way to gift to your dental. Uh, employees or even for the office to get to when, try when in the fall when yeah uh, probably September September and how much is uh, and this is a subscription box it's a surprise box that the dentist would get and give to his hygienist uh, it doesn't have to be it's you know it's something the whole office can love um, it has new products that uh, dental companies will give us you'll get samples of dental products and as well as dentalicious goodies, we call them. So we that last some you eat dentalicious goodies. Something you eat? No, no. They're <laughs> uh, like last time we put a koozie in. We put a water bottle with a tooth on it. So basically, dent uh, products that have that show off your dental pride, I guess. And and what is that box going to cost? It'll be twenty dollars again. So we oh, were you started at twelve. You went to twenty. Why not? Why not go? I mean, if you went to if you went to 40 yeah for half the number of sales you'd have the same revenue right but I mean, you only get in life what you negotiate so why 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 stay at such 20 i mean i can't think of a dentist that that would think here nor there of 20 versus 40. because not i guess not all dentists are buying it and based on market 20 dollars for a subscription box so that's hitting Every season they're getting charged twenty dollars. So based on oh, every season, so it's four times a year, right? Okay, so so, so it's every quarter. So you have right. quarterly income, right? So you're going to try to build up. That, that I like that. So you're going to do a Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and try to get them for uh, twenty dollars. So eighty bucks a year. I'd still make it a hundred. I'd go twenty five. It'd be easy math if you went twenty five. Um, then you could do all the math in your head. Right. Be a hundred dollars a year for a subscription. Uh, but uh but but you know your market, so you're saying twenty. And so what's the season in Q one, Q two, Q three or what's the the theme? Is there a season theme like it's Q four? So tell yeah. us the different uh, Q one, three, two, three, four seasons. So this next one will be in the fall, so that'll be Q three if you call it. Um, will be a we're doing a relaxation um, fall get cozy theme so it's gonna I can't tell you what's in it yet that's pretty much all I can give out but it's it definitely hits home for the you think of fall what do you think of and I think you can brainstorm what types of products we might include in this next box so so um, Q1 would be January February March you mm -hmm. to April May June, Q3 is July, August, September, and then Q4 is my favorite, October, November, December. My, 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 that's my favorite because I am Phoenix. Like, yeah. It's 108 degrees right now. Yeah. And I mean, 108. So what I love is um, October, Halloween, every year Halloween, that's the first time you ever think about, wow, I kind of need a jacket to go out. It's kind of, yeah. it's kind of chilly. And you start with uh, Halloween, which is really cool. And then the next month is Thanksgiving. And then the next month is, you know, Christmas. And then it's New Year's. And uh, and it's not till MLK on about the 15th that, uh, I mean, that's just a, that, that's my fun, right? But I'm trying to think of the theme for July, August, September. Because when you said the fall, I mean, obviously October, November, I think pumpkins, Thanksgiving, Christmas, right. Hanukkah. But Q3, July, August, September. Huh. Which is really, you know, your back to school fall is beginning. Q4 will probably hit more of an early Christmas type of gift giving. So theme. back to school, I'm thinking, um, 
you know, a bottle of Ritalin, ADH medication for the kids, uh, yeah. something to beat them with. So w when you came out with your first gift subscription package, did you send one to Mrs. Funk? No, I did not. Oh my gosh. It was a Valentine's Day box too, so I should have sent her my love. You should have sent Mrs. Funk. That was your hygiene school teacher? She was actually uh, a professor and she's actually the director of dental hygiene at WVU. Dental hygiene what? She's the director of dental hygiene at, w at West Virginia University. At West Virginia Perfect. University. Yep. Huh. Well, you tell Mrs. Funk that I thought you should have sent her a okay. subscription box. And uh, so, uh, so um, it says where you'll see us next. What's R-D-H-U-O-R? That is R-D-H under one roof. Um, oh, U of R, under one roof. That's uh, Dental Economics, Penwell Penwell. Communication. Yep, yep. So do you know where the word Penwell comes from? What? Pennsylvania, where you live. Pennsylvania oil and gas. So oil well. So that company is like a, a century old and it started with Pennsylvania oil wells. And then throughout the years, they've grown to like a hundred magazines and they're out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, but they own uh, dental economics. Um, the website dentistry IQ, they own, um, what is it? Dental RDH or what's their hygiene? Uh, magazine? Yeah. RDH. RDH. And then their annual meeting, like our townie meeting, is under one roof. Mm -hmm. Already, yeah. so so when is that next? That is in August in Chicago. Now, see, the hygiene is so much smarter. They go to Chicago in August. The Chicago yeah. midwinter meeting is in February. Yeah. I mean, penguins don't want to go to Chicago in I know. February. It is the most rocking hot city in April, May, September october november look, look at look at new york they have the new york dental meeting uh what, what's that meeting called the, the greater new york dental meeting yeah. yep. and it's always following thanksgiving so you have thanksgiving with your family on thursday then you go there and some macy's day parade it's fall the shopping i mean it is the most amazing time to go to new york i love the greater new york dental meeting it's the greatest meeting ever because it's the right time of year and when does boston decide to do it which is like up several hundred miles north. Oh yeah, February. Oh, good, good thinking, Boston. That. Was, what was your next best idea? I know they have a great city too, and you can't even. I really know. And what I love about Boston is, um, um, I mean, like Phoenix didn't exist before the air conditioner. I mean, it was mostly Indian reservations, military bases. There's only hardly any people here. Then they invented the air conditioner, and I think at about time of World War II, it was about fifty thousand. And now it's a four million person metro because there's electricity and air conditioners. And if you ever lose the electricity, this town will be gone. I mean, it is literally, it was, it was 120 last week and they had to close down the airport for five hours because at that temperature, the air is so thin, the wings can't get enough lift. So they, they shut the airport down. I think they, they shut it down when it hit, I think 118 and then it went up to like 122 and then it went, and then it, I think when it got back down to 115, they opened up, but, uh, um, gosh, they should, uh, they should have those meetings at a better time here. So you're going to be in August. You're going to be in Chicago. Is it late August, hopefully? Mid-August, I believe. Mid-August is still a little warmy. And then you're going to be at the Pennsylvania Annual Dental Hygiene Show. Is that in Pittsburgh? No, that is actually in Lancaster again this year. So uh, we we went there last year, had a great time. Um, they, have a, they have a really nice city, uh, awesome Amish market. I think it's the biggest outdoor market in the nation i want to say so we have fun have with you our ever gone to an amish dentist no i want to go to an amish dentist i i want ryan will you will you can we do a can we go out to pennsylvania i want i want an amish dentist to perform a root canal on me i just want to see how it's done i mean they probably would get arrested i would feel like so there's so i grew up as there's a ton of mennonites in kansas yeah do you have Amish in Pennsylvania or Amish and Mennonites? Yeah, uh, I'd say both. Do you know, did you know they used to be one? Really? Aren't yeah. they it's two different? They're two different now, but back when they were, uh, but hundreds of years ago, they were one. They, they, are, they don't like technology and they actually split up over a new technology. Do you no, know what that? Yeah. What, what's that? I said, isn't that one uses no electricity and one uses some? No, we're going way back when it was one religious group and they were anti-technology. Technology was not good. 
technology was evil, and then a new technology came out that applies to you. A new technology came out, and that's what split them up into two groups, the Mennonites and the Amish. And you guess what that new technology was? Buttons. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going like three, four hundred years ago. <laughs> but it is so adorable in Kansas when you see a horse and buggy going down the street. And, they, and by law, they got really mad. They had to wear these uh, reflector triangle shields. Yeah. And yeah. you see them at the horse and buggy and you see those little adorable girls in the back and you see that little 10 year old girl and she's got an iPhone in her hand. Yeah. And it's just so adorable. I mean, you're just like, oh, daddy's on a horse and buggy and baby's on an iPhone. I mean, is that just, just beyond, uh, and, and they got a, they got a variety show I saw one time. What, what is it on TV or HBO or something? Uh, oh yeah. Which they, uh, Amish, the Amish girls or. Yeah. The one girl there had a denture um a full denture and she was only like 23 or something yeah so um so okay so uh um another uh thing you could do is um like say uh, maybe do some at um townie meeting we, we have an annual meeting every year we had the uh it's always in april we did the first 15 years one every year in uh, las vegas but now I got uh, uh, grandkids and uh, two of them, and I'm selfish. And the next two are going to be at or in Orlando. So I think it's uh, April. It go to townymeeting.com. Okay. And uh, so it'll be uh, by Disney World the next two uh, Aprils. I think it's April 19th or whatever. You might want to do something down there. But I just want to tell you that um, uh, your um, I I love your hustle. I love your creativity. I just love following you on Twitter and I just, I just think everything about you. I want to, I want my homies to support you. Uh, yeah. I, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to buy some stuff for my, uh, my hygienist and uh, anything I can do. Uh, you, you just launched it one month ago, right? Well, we've been, we've done apparel for two years. The scrubs just launched this, this last month. So we've been doing the fun trendy apparel since 20. 15, 16. And, and what's the difference between apparel and scrubs? Apparel is your fun anti-scrub, if you call it. Um, it's your shirt that you might go to the gym or run errands with. So it's your, um, it's, you know, the dental puns. Like we have a shirt that says just floss it or uh, like the pineapple tooth that you just showed earlier. So stuff like that, that you'll wear outside of work. And then the scrubs are obviously your work uniform. Well, you know what? Send me an email, Howard at Dentaltown.com, and CC my president, uh, Lori. She's been my president. In fact, Thursday, tomorrow, will be her 19-year anniversary with me. My assistant's uh, been with me 30 years. And so she's at Lori at Ferran Media, because Ferran Media owns Dentaltown, Hygiene Town, Ortho. But Lori at Ferran Media, mm -hmm. and uh, Howard at Dentaltown.com, and like I say, I want to, I want to, um, take you on as the daughter I never had and help you, uh, help you really get this going because I just think what you're doing, it's a, it's fun. Uh, I love the energy. I love the karma. Uh, dentistry can be, and here, here's another thing I'll say to Dennis, you know, when they come out of school, you know, what I want to bet on is I tell, I say this, you know, all the time, are you hungry? Uh, if you come out of school and you want to work Monday through Thursday, nine to five, you're, you're not hungry. And right. they talk about how they get, you know, I hear all these people talking about, well, I got all this student loan. Should I buy a house or should I lease my car? It's like, well, what are your hours? Well, I work, I work Monday through Thursday, nine to five. It's like, are you out of your mind? Hello. I mean, you're lazy. I mean, I mean, I, so nine to five means 95 hours a week. That's 13 and a half hours a day times seven days a week. You got to stay humble just because you want everybody to believe something. Uh, doesn't mean that that they do. Um, you may believe uh, that Grandpa wants a tooth-colored filling that's all pretty and aesthetic, but he may want the cheapest thing you can do, which is a silver filling. Right. And you know, so um, like I, all my restorations are gold. That's an, that's the number one thing I can't figure out about women. I mean, they put gold in their ears, their nose, their belly button, their wedding ring. All my dental work is gold. It's the longest-lasting, best work you can do. And every damn woman will sit there with a gold bar through her nose, a, a seven in her ear, gold chain, gold ring, and say, no, I don't want gold. It's like, what is it that women decorate every body part they have with gold except their teeth? What, what up with that? 
I will say our, our logo is a it's actually a gold tooth because every time I see one, it's like such a rare occurrence and they're always so beautiful. So nowadays it's it's kind of like that unicorn, like you said before, a gold tooth is the unicorn of the mouth. So you just don't see it anymore, but it's definitely hands down the prettiest dental restoration I've ever seen. So so what but what do you think it is though? Why do you think it is that in America it's, they'll put gold on every body part but a tooth? Is it's your teeth? It's it's a weird color. It sticks out. People want white. Okay, well, okay. Then compare it to your belly button. I mean, I see gold yeah. bars. I had one girl sitting in chair. She had like a, it looked like a gold bar with a three inch chain hanging off her belly button. And when I suggested a gold crown on number two because it's very short, it's hardly any clearance, I wouldn't have to. Try. She she looked at me like I was from Pluto. Yeah. And I just want to say, um, ma'am, you have a gold bar with a chain hanging from your belly button. <laughs> and I'm talking about your second molar that only me and your yeah. uh, uh, ENT will ever see the rest of your life. Maybe it's the contrast. I mean, you get it's such a dark color. It sticks out. It's the first thing you see. So, I mean, silver is still a really dark contrast. So it kind of almost if you look really quick, it might look it just catches someone's eye a lot faster. I don't know. I mean, hmm. It's just trends now. I don't know. Trends, fashion, <laughs> come and go. Uh, but um, hey, I think uh, like say um, check out Hygiene Town, check out Dental Town. Uh, anything you're a hygienist. Anything you want to do uh, with Hygiene Town, uh, just email me and Lori. Um, I would uh, love love it someday when I was uh, uh, 75 instead of 55 and say I remember helping that girl explore yeah. her business. So I, I wish you the best like of luck. Uh, so stay hungry, hustle, nine to five, 95 hours a week. Stay humble just because I think gold fillings are the best and amalgams are the longest lasting cheaping material. 99.99% .99 of all my patients don't want either of them. Um, right. Listen to your customers, listen to your vendors. And uh, if you hustle and you stay humble and you work 95 hours a week, you're going to crush it. Yeah. Cause I sense, I, I see your passion. I mean, if, if your Instagram and Twitter and your product line says anything, you just exude passion. So you obviously love what you're doing. Love. And if you love what you're doing and you're hungry hu and hustle, my God, you're going to crush it. Thank you. Thanks. And we're a huge fan of you guys, too. So we, I'd say your your Pinterest ads and your tweets are right up there with our funny tweets. So Yeah, you're... we're both Dennis and Sensor. I mean, uh, and I always get the same comment. They always say at the end of a lecture or whatever, they say, for some reason... You can get away with saying the speakers always say it to me, you go, if I would have said that, I'd never be able to speak again. But <laughs> you, you can just say it. And I, the difference is because you own it. I mean, if you just, yeah. if you don't care, this is your passion. That's why I call mine dentistry uncensored. You yeah. Know, if you can't hear a fart joke, then go, you know, go listen to, um, you know, another one. People want to see the raw footage too. I mean, that's why reta or reality TV was so big. And now it's, you know, the Snapchats and Instagram stories. People want to see, who you really are. And I think that's a great way to get people involved is just be yourself and be uncensored as you call it. I mean, we're all real people just because we pop in to see a patient and we're all professional doesn't mean we're like that all day long. So I think it's, it's really key to be true to yourself. Yeah. yeah. I, well, t t tell me one last thing, tell a grandpa with uh, two grandkids. So, so what do I, I have? A, what is the Snapchat thing? You mentioned it went public. They did an IPO for 27 billion you're not well, on it? No, I mean, I'm on I'm on too many. I mean, God dang, I'm on Dental Town, Hygiene Town, Ortho Town, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and Google+. Plus. I mean, I want another social media property, like a hole in my head. Yeah. And everybody tells me I should drop Google+. Plus. They say the only people that read that are uh, Google employees. But what, what are you on Snapchat? Uh, we, I am personally on Snapchat, but for company-wise, we uh, only use Instagram stories now. So what's it? What is Snapchat? What, what's the difference between? If your dad said to you, "What's the difference between Snapchat and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram?" What 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 is what is it? What's different um, about it? I guess uh, Snapchat. It's you just take pictures and videos, and they you send them to people, or you put them on your story, as they call it. And again, it's kind of showing your friends the cool stuff that you're doing or where you're at. You can put fun geo tags and say i'm in los angeles this week and 
it, I think it really plays into the FOMO again. It's showing all your friends that you're really cool and showing them where you're, you're at in your daily life life. So Instagram stories is more, um, product featuring and you get more, you're able to display more products and announcements and you can post blog articles on them. So it's just a totally different, same concept, but just different audience, I think. But it's basically sending videos, pictures that disappear after 24 hours. All right, that was Caitlin Rastetter, RDH, DentalHygieNation.com. You can email her, Caitlin, at DentalHygieNation.com. Pittsburgh, are you a Steelers fan? Most definitely. Penguin fan. Penguin fan. All right, well, hey, uh, best of luck to you. And uh, I know you're going to crush it. I mean, I don't doubt it for a minute. And uh, thank you so much for coming to my show. And if any of the homies learned anything, what a rocking hot gift idea for your hygienist. I mean, she will be stunned that you actually were thinking of her and that you actually bought something for her. And then whenever you, you know, they're expecting something on their birthday or Christmas or Hanukkah, but when you get something cool and fun for someone that they weren't expecting, that, that, those are the best gifts. It's just thinking of you. And I, right. I dropped just a little, and, and the coin is nothing. I mean, so you drop a little coin, 20 bucks, 40 bucks, whatever, and get her a fun hat or whatever the hell. Um, that, that's, just, that's just a cool moment. Definitely. For sure. All right. Good luck to you.